Well, hello. My name's David and I'm the rector of St Columbus by the Castle Church in the centre of Edinburgh. And I'm standing in the entranceway of our church where hopefully the first thing people might see as they come into the church is this word welcome and a genuinely uh, genuine warm handshake in the days when that was the sort of thing we could do. Um, also in the porch, there's a reminder that we are here as a community to worship God and also that we are a community in which people of all different perspectives on life um, can find a home and can belong together with a genuinely Christian welcome to one and all. So we move from the porch and we go into our little church. Very small church. This church was built in the 1840s, about 180 years ago, and it was built uh, on the side of Castle Rock and the extinct volcano to serve the poorest of the poor who lived in the grass market in those days. It was a place of great deprivation and suffering, and the church was put here to serve them. And one of the very first things that happened was that um, underneath this building, the church was um, the, is the is the hall, and that was a school for 200 children who climbed up from the grass market every day and went to school in what is now our church hall. At the moment, the church is in a little bit of um, disarray because if I show you this, this is our church organ, and at the moment we are having the church organ repaired and renewed. Um, and so there's a little bit of um, clutter as the uh, men who are doing that work uh, uh, carry on with it. The organ is part of providing the music that we use in the church. Um, we love music here at St Columbus and we love to sing. Of course, in the days when we were allowed to sing in church, now only one person can sing. But the organ is there to accompany the hymns perhaps to play other music as well, to add to the quality of our worship. It's not a big organ, but it's, it makes a beautiful sound. And often in a church, uh, you can see here some of the, the keys uh, that are going back in the organ, but often in a church you'll find near the door a font. Um, fonts existed long before computers ever had things called fonts. Um, it means really, it comes from the word fountain, it's really a pool of water. And this is the place where, as we physically enter the building, it's also symbolically where we enter the community of the church and when people are baptised, washed in water, as a sign of their union uh, in faith with God, uh, the God who we uh, follow through Jesus Christ. And you might be baptised as a baby or um, as old as a great-grandparent. Of any age, the person is welcome. And so into the main body of the church and down the sides we have uh, stained glass windows. These first came into churches as, as ways of telling stories from our scriptures um, to people who couldn't read. But these particular windows are filled with pictures of saints, of holy men and women, um, many of them from Scotland who led exemplary lives as Christians. We come down through the main aisle of the church towards the front. And the first thing that you will notice probably is quite an unusual thing. It's, it's a mural painted on our east wall. There used to be a window here, a stained glass window, which collapsed about 60 years ago. And a member of the congregation then uh, was a very well-known artist called John Busby. And he was asked to paint something um, on this wall because they couldn't afford uh, to replace the stained glass window. This is what is known as Christ in glory, a picture of Jesus after his resurrection. And it is full of symbolism. There are saints over there on the left in heaven worshipping. There are angels again in heaven uh, worshipping and there are angels around Jesus. 
There are also four figures, an eagle, an ox, a lion, and a man, which are part of images that come from the Hebrew scriptures and that were used in Christianity to represent the four evangelists who wrote about Jesus, John, Luke, Matthew, and Mark. Jesus um, is portrayed with his arms out, maybe reminding us of the, his death on the cross, but also perhaps in a gesture of welcome to us, to embrace us um, and to love us. His feet rest upon um, a snake, a, um, a, an ancient symbol of the evil one, and reminding us that Jesus has been triumphant over all evil, and it offers us uh, freedom and forgiveness and love. And then at the bottom, there are a couple of pictures you can just see. Um, a man sowing seeds in his field, reminding us of one of Jesus' parables, and also a picture of a bonfire, a day of judgment seen when all that's evil um, will be consumed and all that will remain will be love. It's a bit of a Marmite mural. Some people love it, some people hate it, but it is what we have. And of course, this is not the focus of our worship, but it's just a reminder to us of some of the, the messages in our faith. Um, while we focus our attention, um, obviously, upon God, uh, this is just a visual uh, prompt and reminder of some of the truths that we believe in. Below it is the table. In some churches, it might be called an altar. Um, it's a reminder, again, of the place where Jesus shared his last meal before he was arrested and put to death. And it's the place on which we, um, uh, on a weekly basis, remember that and share together in bread and wine. There are lots of candles all around the place. Um, these candles, again, an ancient symbol that most faiths will share in, a symbol of light, um, the sense of God's presence and God's goodness and God's love sharing with us. We have a bell, you can see here, probably the largest bell in any church um, in Scotland. It was originally in a, in, a, in a nunnery, a convent, and it was given to the church a long time ago um, to go into our tower. But at that point, the tower was just an empty shell, uh, nowhere to hang the bell, so they put it on a frame and put it in the, in the church. And we ring it uh, at certain very special sacred moments um, in, the, in the church's worship. On the right-hand side over here, we have a sculpture of Mary cradling the baby Jesus, um, which I believe was uh, reportedly found on a rubbish tip. Somebody had thrown it out. Can you believe it? Um, and it's a beautiful carving. Again, just a reminder to us of some of the, of the story of the birth of Jesus and something that we, again, hold dear and we celebrate every year at Christmas time. And then on the other side, we have a little um, uh, wall safe in which, if there is any bread or wine from our communion service that's not been eaten or drunk, then um, it's kept inside that safely. And outside it, we have a book, not of the full Bible, um, but of the four Gospels, a uh, picture of Jesus there on the front. And we show people that we are keeping um, those sacred things here by having this special um, light hanging over it. And then over here, we have um, some more candles. This is a place where people can um, light a particular candle for, uh, as a sign of their prayers if they want to. Here we have the pulpit, where traditionally um, sermons would be preached, though I have to say these days we tend to just stand on the same level as everybody else. But hanging from it is a lovely um, weaving. Uh, it's a picture of St. Columba, after whom the church is named. You can see him on the left in a boat coming across the sea from Ireland. He came and founded a, a monastery on the Isle of Iona, which became a very sacred place. You can see the castle um, of Edinburgh on the right, and the picture of the dove, a symbol in our faith of the Holy Spirit, but Columba, um, his name meant the dove of the church. Um, so he was inspired by the Holy Spirit to live a particularly holy life. And um, next to that, in the window, uh, there in the center, is a picture of Columba himself, again, spreading the good news of the love of God around Scotland. He had a really important um, role to play. 
He was a migrant, like so many others in our world today. He created a wonderfully open, hospitable community, and he reached out to society to create justice and try to bring peace. All of those are things that are really very dear to us here at St. Columbus by the castle. We try to follow in Columbus' footsteps, but of course, ultimately, we try to follow in Jesus' footsteps. So I hope that will have shown you something about the life um, and the uh, nature of the church building here at St. Columbus. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. God bless and goodbye.